Welcome back to Water Fan TV. The released list is out, and uh, we're referring back to the uh, the live stream we did discussing the squad. And um, looks like there's a couple of things we didn't quite get spot on, but um, pretty close to. And the first one, Jack Rose. We had sort of intimated that perhaps we'd keep him, but uh, let's be honest, he's been there three years and um, not really kept himself in the team when he's got in. I, I retweeted a video that we put out at the end of last season on the worst goals of the season. And uh, Jack Rowers um, had the uh, had Blue the Blue beauty Blue. of one of those. Um, but of course, Liam Roberts had his own worst goal of the season competition all by himself, didn't he? Okay, so Jack Rowers has gone. Um, he announced that on Twitter before the official announcement, but I think we we're all expecting that that was going to happen. Um, Defensive-wise, uh, we know Stephen Ward has retired and Matt Sadler has retired, so they've gone. Uh, Zach Mills is one that we highlighted that was going to be off, and uh, I happened to catch up with him on Saturday and had a chat with him. He was saying that he'd asked for more chances and to have a run in the team, and it never really happened for him, despite Stephen Ward being um, exposed at left-back. Zach Mills never really got the chance, um, but when he, has figured, when he has figured in the team, um, he'd not done too bad, I think. What do you think, Stephen? I thought he was quite a good player for us. He only played a couple of games, but the games that he played, he looked quite promising. But I think the way that he hasn't been playing as much has led to him um, his bad match fitness. Yeah, not having run in the team is difficult. I think yeah. everybody that anybody that's played football knows that the level of fitness from regular football and regular games puts you on a different level completely. And he didn't have the chance to do that, which I think is unlucky. Bear in mind, Stephen Ward was obviously struggling at left back. Um, he did have a couple of niggling injuries, but largely he was fit. Um, when he was brought into Warsaw, he was told that he would be the backup player and uh, never had a chance to sort of move forward in the ranks, as it were. Um, another player that we talked about, we thought perhaps Warsaw might loan out for the season next season was Tom Leake, but he has been released. And for me, his lack of heading ability is um has been the big one for me. What do you think, Tom Leake? We know we liked him, didn't we? But yeah, I like Tom Leake. Obviously, his lacking of head heading ability for a centre back is quite um. It's well fundamental, called. isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's kind of the key thing that you need. But then I say like maybe put him as a right back or left back, or maybe even put him a bit further forward. Maybe like a as a CDM or centre mid, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he could have offered a bit more there, but. Possibly. Um, it's a shame when uh, when young players sort of break into the team and then fall away. Um, I will be speaking to Rob Williams, the academy manager, uh, later this month. So uh, watch out for that. We'll be sort of asking him about that development and really sort of getting players through to the first team and hopefully sticking. So that's something we're going to be doing there. One player that is not leaving us and he's coming back into the fold is Joe Folks who's done very well with uh, Kidderminster. So he's obviously impressed there, and um, the Warsaw eyes have been on him. So he should be one of the fringe players next season, I would think. A big signing that Warsaw have already made, of course, Donovan Daniels getting him signed up for next season. Um, we did see a funny comment from uh, Mick Flynn about Manny Month, saying he uh, needed to make sure he didn't put weight on during the close season. Right. But bear in mind, the close season is only going to be about four weeks before they're back in training, four or five weeks. So um, he hasn't got long. <laughs> in midfield, Lee Tomlin. That experiment didn't really work. He sort of he came in and looked good and was a good inspiration to the players around him. But his groin troubles returned and uh, it's no surprise that he's been released. Mm -hmm. Um. He showed a few glimpses, didn't he, Stephen? Yeah, very skillful moments on the pitch, but obviously his um, injuries has put him out of that. And he was only on a six-month deal anyway, so it's not like he was going to stay permanently. No. Plus his age, he was kind of the same age as Stephen Ward, so 
it looked like this was probably going to be his last season anyway, so... Yeah, OK, I agree. One player that's leaving us is Joe Willis. Well, he only had the one start for Warsaw. Uh, I think he was in the JPT, and he's been at Bromsgrove. I did speak to him on Saturday, and uh, he thought he'd uh, made a good impression at uh, Bromsgrove. They had been struggling for relegation, and uh, he managed to help keep them up. But he's obviously not impressed the hierarchy. And uh, it's a shame for him, because I think he's a nice lad um, from the chat we had with him. I think... Bromsgrove will uh, offer him a contract. I so think so as well. I think it was a bad idea for Warsaw to let him go because we could have gave Joe to a Bromsgrove and we could have got a little bit of money from it. But now he's a free agent, isn't he? Yeah. So The midfielder that perhaps is uh, one of the most contentious is uh, Emmanuel Ausadibi. Paddy? Yes. He starts every season horribly... And then, as the season goes on, he starts to look like a bit of a player. Mick Flynn had said that he was very frustrated with him. And you would think that he would be released. But apparently, talks are still ongoing. What those talks are going to be is hard to understand. Maybe he's just not answering the phone so they can tell him he's gone. Because mm -hmm. um, then, of course, Walsh wouldn't be able to officially announce he'd been released unless they'd spoken to him first. So... It could be something as crazy as that. For me, Al db he's got a great talent, but I think we've got other options that are going to be better for us, and there's better players out there. Stephen, what do you think? I think if we do keep him, Mike Flynn yeah. is going to change him. I think he's going to make him more passionate about the game and get him more involved to be more creative. Also, I think he doesn't want Michael Flynn doesn't want to get his, like a, too many players out of the team. Because if you think we built up a stable team this season, yeah. they used to playing with each other. It's that bit of stability, but, isn't it? Yeah, if we keep get if we just take out players and players now, like key players to the game, even if they don't perform for most of the game, not having that chemistry and that. You know, that yeah, connection I think with your teammates is going to be key for us. It's, it's a balance, isn't it? Sometimes as a manager you want to shake things up, but other times you want to sort of build the stability. We know yeah. how well Sutton have done this year by having a stable team. I mean, because we, we change our team every season. Like, <laughs> we have literally been. every season. But this season, I don't think it's going to be as much of a change, is it? Yeah, which I think is going to be the good thing. Uh, a couple of players going good. out, a couple of players coming in. That's all we need, really, just backups and then a tight man. Yeah. Um, when we were discussing uh, midfield on our squad analysis, Sam Perry was one that we were fearful that he would get released because uh, we like Sam Perry and he's got a lot of good qualities. Mm -hmm. uh, we know sort of fitness has been an issue. Um, but again, as I say, a run of games brings a whole different level of fitness. And I think the key moment for Sam Perry staying was when he broke in front of that defender and got his head on that goal. Yeah. Um, and scored that goal. It showed. It's a key moment. He hasn't been playing all season. He comes in for one game. He scores. He's showing. He's saying, "Hey, Gaffer, look at me." <laughs> That's like, it. Yeah. This is what he's I've got. showing. There's more to Blame him, me. isn't there? There's more to him. Yeah. And um, he has got a lot more to offer Warsaw, and I'm really glad he's staying. So uh, that's really good news. Same. One player that's been released, not from Warsaw, but from Le from Leicester, is uh, Tyree Shade. And you can understand what, the way he's been performing. <laughs> Bloody heck. A Warsaw going to try and get Shade? Because F Flynn has given Shade a lot of minutes Yeah. Um, since he's been at the club. Um, but for me... I oh, know there'll be this... I'd love to hear comments on that, what you think of Shade. Um, I mean, the last guy we brought from Leicester went quite well. Josh Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's a. Maybe you'll get there. Maybe yeah. Maybe it's. But a again, I keep. I've said it before. As a winger, if you can't beat players in a one-on-one, -on -one, you're not. A, you're finished. Yeah, much. and he's he's not his crosses aren't great. Um, and bear in mind they had him employed him as a striker when he's had chances in front of goal. He's been on one-on-ones with a keeper and not being able to beat him. So, uh, for me, Shade, 
he'll probably go and do well elsewhere. But for me, I'd leave leave it. Um, Al Sadibi, as I say, I think he'll be gone. I would expect him to prop up somewhere else in League Two. But um, mm -hmm. I think not for Warsaw, really. Up front, nobody released. Um, George Miller, will he get called back? Or will Barnsley want him, having been relegated? For me, um, I wouldn't want him back. Um, there's lots of options out there. And uh, we've got a video coming up in maybe tomorrow with uh, some interesting transfer rumours. Um, but one I can tell you about, a return of Richard O'Donnell. Ooh. An experienced goalie. Um, he's announced he's uh, leaving Bradford. So is that a player you'd want back at Warsaw? Let me know what you think. And now, before we go, just to let you know, if you haven't heard already, Lee Pomlet is going to be on a live stream with me Friday at 1 o'clock. So uh, look tune forward in. to that. Yeah. Make sure you tune in. If you miss it, don't worry, you'll be able to catch up. But uh, we'll be talking to him about things such as life as a chairman, the recruitment, including Jamie Fullerton, um, development of players, the freehold, and uh, several other things. I've had some good questions that have come through on Twitter. If you'd like to ask him a question, pop me a message in the comments and uh, I'll put it onto my list. But I think we've got uh, most areas covered, I think. Mm -hmm. Right then, Wolves Fan TV, the joy we're forever hopeful and the pain we've had enough of. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Cheers.